So let's have a look at what's in the box. So let's open it up. Okay, so in the box itself, you just have the uh, unit here. Um, you can see it's very nicely packaged. Okay, so I think uh, everything is underneath this. So I'll pull this out. Uh, so that's this is the unit itself. I'll take that out in a minute. Now in the box, uh, looks like you get a pouch for the uh, unit to be put into. Uh, there's a power plug. I'll probably have to get an adapter for this because um, it's probably US or something. So I'm going to have to get an international adapter. Um, it looks like there's two uh, HDMI cables that come with it. And you also then get your camera mount as well that you've got there. And a USB-C to USB-A uh, cable there. Um, so that'll be how you'll charge the unit up. Uh, and then to get this part out, I think it's fairly tight in there actually to get out, so it's certainly well packaged. So this is the unit itself. Uh, you can see it's, it's really nicely made actually. Uh, feels really good on the back. Uh, then you just get, I think this is probably, yeah, it's just got your SIM card uh, remover in it so you can take your sim card out or we'll put a sim card into it so I'll keep that in the box at the moment uh, and it's just a little user manual that comes with it as well so the ports the back of this there's there's two HDMI that you've got here um, there's one USB port that you can also connect HDMI out uh, if you have an adapter uh, you can also have the HDMI that's here this is the out um, and then there's an Ethernet, that's an audio port that you've got here, and then you've got your USB Type-C there that you probably obviously use to charge. Uh, apart from that, there's just your um, on-off button, I would say, through here. Uh, you've got a little SIM card that you'd use through here, and that's an SD card that you would attach through this section through here as well. And you've got an audio out through here as well that you could attach headphones or things like that to. Um, so it looks like a really nice unit. So what we'll do is we'll set it up, I'll get it working, uh, and then we'll have a look at it working. Okay, so you'll notice when I first boot this up, it, it comes up to setting your language. So I'll just go next on this, and then you can just put in your time that you are. Now we're Sydney, so I'm just gonna find Sydney through here. There we go, Sydney is plus 10. So I'll go net done. And then now it's asking for an email, so I'm gonna put my email in. So I think you just tap, and then you can stick your email in. Oh, so we have to sit, uh, get a network connection up first. So I think I've got to go up to the top up here and then select a Wi-Fi network, use Wi-Fi. Okay, so it shows connected on here. So I'm using that one. So you can see it's connecting, it's, con it's grabbing the uh, internet address. It'll come up in a second. Now it's saying connected, so it's done. So then I can just, I'm already on that one, connected. So I can just say, okay, go back, now go next. Now it's sent a verification code to my email, so I'll check that now. All right, so once I've, it asks you to put in a password, which I did, uh, and then it's saying um, the uh, this updated version number, uh, it just gives you that, I think. So I can say, okay, I think it's asking me if I wanna upgrade the firmware. So I'll say, okay, and now it's upgrading the firmware. Okay, so you can see the setup that I've got here. Um, you can see that uh, the A7S is on the right-hand side. That's going to be shooting the Dalek. Uh, the other camera, which is the A7 III, is shooting the Star Wars character that I've got there as well. Now, they're both connected through the HDMI cables that you're looking at through here. So that's how they're both connected uh, at this stage. Uh, and then I'll just be using this unit to switch between the two of them. And I've got an overhead camera just here that will be showing you what I'm doing on the actual display itself. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll actually have a look and um, see how we add a program in. Okay, so now that we've unboxed it and everything and looked at how you originally set this up, we'll, I thought I'd show you how you can create a live stream and use the actual interface of this uh, unit. Just to click up here, just to sh take you through this menu, uh, you can see here that I've already set up Facebook and also YouTube uh, on there as well. There's Twitter coming soon and that may be Twitch, I'm not sure what that one is. Um, now just your settings through here, you can check your Wi-Fi, uh, the version number of, the, uh, of your firmware and things like that in there, the IMEI, and there's more will take you back to uh, their website actually. Uh, and there's also your network settings through here, 
email, serial number of your unit, the time zone, and if you've recorded any video at all on the internal card uh, as well. Uh, you can log out of the whole device, and you can also do a factory reset from here as well. So let me go back. So adding the, um, Adding the actual streams is very easy once you've got an account set up. So I'm not going to take you through that, but uh, it is quite a simple process. You just put your username and uh, your password. Now to create a live stream, all I do is I click on here on the plus. Now I'm just going to show you at this stage, I'm, I'm just going to create just a, you know, a private uh, stream so that I don't get people sort of logging in. Uh, so we'll do that now and we'll just go test. I mean, it doesn't matter whatever you put in. This will be the, your heading and then underneath. Uh, I'll just put testing. All right, so then we've got that done. You can see the live uh, stream title is there and the description is testing as well. Your date, you can choose from here. I'm gonna make it today. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put it sometime in the future. So your first one is the hour. Now I'll go PM and I'm gonna make it say six uh, PM and then it jumps then immediately to the minutes uh, scrolling through here. So I might make it about 6.45 just so that I've got enough time uh, to demo all of this uh, and then I'll just say okay. Now you can see now that it's set down here with it's scheduled for December 23rd 2020 and it's at 6 45 p.m. my time here in Australia so if I go create what it will now do it just creates that schedule. Now it hasn't posted it yet because I actually have to tell it what I want to stream to because I can stream to multiple devices so to get into it all I do is I just click here and then it will open up. Now it will find the two cameras that I've actually got selected on these units at the moment. So I've got an A7S III and an A7 III connected through here. Uh, the A7S III is on HDMI 1 and the A7 III is on HDMI 2. Now, it's picked those up immediately. Now to switch between them, um, you can just basically hit the, or tap on the uh, window like that and it will uh, give you a nice smooth transition. And I'll show you where you set all of this up uh, a little bit later in the menus. Now you can also, from this, if you wanted to, you can click here and you can add things like, uh, if you wanted to something from your SD card, you could add live streams, you could put USB devices, and this is another way that you can add video from the USB port. So you can add three cameras to this, as long as you have something like an Elgato adapter, uh, it will work and you can stream with an extra camera. Um, down here, uh, if you go picture and picture. Now, if I have one of these as myself, well then obviously I could put myself in the corner and you could be showing something else. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how this works. So what you do first, you select your first picture and then you say next. Then you go your next one and say next. Now you'll see that it puts the pictures then in picture and picture. And then you can move this around to anywhere you'd like to put it. Uh, and the other thing too, which is fantastic about this too, you can scale this down or enlarge it up and then still move it around. So it's actually really useful uh, for what you want to do. And now it appears as a camera down here. So it's a very usable interface. So again, I can just switch between this one, or then if I wanted to talk and have my face in it, I could just bring up picture and picture and it would work that way. So it's, it's a really great system. Um, now, if I want to, you'll notice I've got now here uh, David Oslo, that's my YouTube, this is my uh, Facebook page, oh, it is Twitch. Um, and you can also do custom RT, uh, RTMP as well if you know how to do that. And if you have a, a YouTube account, you just use those settings and you can link that up as well. Um, now, all I have to do to publish this so that people will see it online is just go like this. And then I just determine how I want this to be uh, Published. So I'm just going to say unlisted at the moment because I don't want people to see it. Uh, I'm just going to go unlisted and I'll say okay. If you want to go public, you would just say public. Um, I'm going to say done. Now that will now appear inside my YouTube feed. Uh, and if, if I put it public, other people would have seen that. Uh, they'll get a notification that you've got a, a stream coming up in the near future. So I'll just take a screen grab and I'll show you how that appears in YouTube. Okay, so I just took that uh, screen grab and you can sort of see there that just says private, it shows the test and the testing there and it just says upcoming on the uh, uh, little icon there as well and everyone else will get that and they can be waiting for your stream to actually start. Uh, if you wanted to then you could, if you were online, you could sort of schedule this ahead of time and then you could put on things like monetization and things like that on the, on the stream as well. Um, so if I wanted to stream to Facebook at the same time, I could just click on that and it would be ready. Uh, and the other thing too is, I can also record this 
uh, onto the card as well. Uh, if I click onto here, um, you'll see here that it says SD card space is 58 gigabytes. Uh, expected recording time is 19 hours, 37 minutes. So it must use a fair amount of compression on this uh, to get that to work. Uh, and I could just start recording uh, as well. Uh, so let's do that now. Uh, so it's recording at the same time, uh, and then I could stop it. And I'll record, I will record, I'll press record on there once I start the actual live stream, just so that you can sort of see how that works. Now, a couple of things too, uh, if you want to change the resolution, you can change it through here. Uh, so you can change that if you wanted to. Uh, let me just come back to here. Okay, so to, if I click in here, you'll get overlays. Uh, if I then go add, now that you can add an image overlay if you've got it on your card or something like that, uh, you can also put lower thirds in. Uh, this one sort of has a, a lower third which you can sit onto the side. This would run along the whole bottom uh, and then you've got um, translucent ones that will see through and things like that and even rolling captions as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this top one. Now, before you start move, uh, typing anything in, you can move it around to where you'd like to go on that side. Um, you can also play with things like offsets and things like that as well, uh, depending on what you'd like to do or you, you, know, you can sort of turn this around. So you have got a little bit of control over how this looks. Um, once you've changed it though, it doesn't seem to move, so you do have to sort of get that position uh, right in the beginning. Now I'll put the text in, so I'm just going to put Osla Images. That's my photography uh, business name. And then I'm going to put YouTube Live. All right, and then I can say Done. Now you'll see it down the corner down there. So if I wanted then to scale it and make it bigger, I can bring it up a little bit too if I wanted to go that way. And then I just say done. Now that sits here in the overlays menu. So if I want to turn that on at any time, I can. So you know these are fantastic. You can just sort of clip it on, clip it off. Uh, so that's really great uh, as well. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is how you can add an overlay, but this time a graphic overlay, something like I'm going to use, which is actually my company logo. Um, so if you click on now, what I've done is I've copied the logo onto the SD card. Now they have to be saved as a PNG file, so you get transparency. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just click Add now. Now I'm going to click on Image Overlay this time, and then it will come up. There's a test one, but this is the one that I've got now, which is called Watermark. Uh, and I'm going to click on that, and then just say Done. And then what it will do, it just brings it on the screen. Now, all you can then do is you have to scale down the size that you'd like this to go, and then you simply move it into the position where you'd like it to go. Uh, I might make it a bit smaller and just sort of stick it down here somewhere. Um, and that's how you do it. So you could stick your logo in. Uh, I might even make it a fraction smaller. Let me move it like that and drag it down into there so that you can see it on the white there. Uh, and then I just say done. Uh, so this is it. So then all I do is say done. Now it's then sitting on this little overlay. So if you go back in now and all I have to do to activate it is click onto it once and it will show there on the overlay. And that's it. So you could have an, any number of these if you wanted to create a few of them. You could have different logos and things like that if you wanted to go that way. Uh, so it's a really good system. And I'll show how you can also show this in full screen too. Um, so that's all your overlays. Now this part here, like I said, was where you want to go live. If you want to stream to both platforms at, at the same time, you can. Now the audio is super good because what the audio does, it used to just basically switch with the cameras and that was a real pain. This, these latest updates let you choose the camera that you want as the master. Now if I select HDMI 1, no matter when I switch, the audio will come from HDMI 1. And you can control your uh, volumes and everything else through here as well. If you're on auto, then you can control the volumes of each camera individually or even a USB and line in, etc. I like to use HDMI 1 because then I know it's not going to be switching and your audio volume changes all the way through. So that's really important for me. So this is a fantastic uh, little uh, device that they've now added, which is great. You can even put headphones in, but you've just got to be aware there is a delay if you're using headphones. So uh, that's one of the issues uh, that you do have to deal with, uh, and it's got a fraction of a delay, and I don't like to do that. So I just tick it and monitor it to make sure it's okay, and then I take the headphones off. Uh, this part here, you can add parts uh, like a scoreboard. So if you were doing this for you know a live football match or something like that, you can turn this on down here. Now you can change this because if you look at the team info down the bottom, you can put whatever you want to put down here. You can even add logos and things like that, uh, stuff like that. It's just got the uh, 218 World Cup 
uh, there as well. Uh, and then what you can do is if I go back, uh, you can then change the score. So this is how you'd change the score as well, which is just fantastic if you do that sort of work. You can even put a timer in, so you could check how long each half has been uh, going. So you could then say start and it will actually uh, go and then you could press pause if you wanted to pause it or reset it. So you know, it really is uh, a great little uh, app if you're um, into sports and things like that. I think that's a terrific uh, part to this. I, I wouldn't use that because I don't do sports, but it's a lot of people might find that fantastic. This other section here we're gonna test shortly because uh, this is meant to be the comments that come through in YouTube. So when I go live, I'll just get my wife uh, to log in and hopefully she can see that working and we'll be able to see her comment coming up uh, in there as well. Uh, the next section down here is just how you can determine if you want to just click to switch, and that's what I like, or you can click, uh, click double uh, click to switch. So you'd have to press twice to make it uh, switch. I, I just like click once to do it. Um, SD card management is here as well. It'll tell you uh, how much space you've got left on your card. The HDMI out lets you have a cable into a monitor so you could view it on the big screen. Uh, so that's very handy too if you'd like to do that. Uh, and that might be something that you could put into a switcher or something like that as well. Video transitions, this is where all the trans uh, transitions are. Uh, you've got cut, and I'll show you just how these work. That's what used to be in there, but now they've added things like fades, and I love the fade. I think it's, it's terrific. The fade, you've got wipe uh, there as well. You've got directional wipe. Uh, you've got translation, um, window. You've got simple zoom. These look pretty freaky. <laughs> uh, you've got cross transition, and then you've got squeeze as well down there. So you've got plenty of choices. I just honestly would just like, I just like fade, and I'm so happy that they've got these transitions now into this, which is really terrific. Um, and that's it for the settings and things like that. Uh, and basically, if you want to see this full screen, all you have to do is click down here, and then you'll see the uh, image in full screen. And then if you wanted to, you've still got all of your controls through here, like if I want to stick the lower thirds in, I can do that. Um, if I click on it again, it takes it off. Uh, if I want to come to here, you can still go live and choose your platform. Um, if I want to go to um, here, on this part, this is where you can switch your cameras. Uh, so you can look at a big screen if you wanted to. Uh, and also you've got direct access. If I wanna click outside that, it should disappear. Uh, you've also got your audio monitoring, uh, if you're using the scoreboard, etc. Let me just come back in. Um, I probably won't use much of this um, on the larger screen because I, I do like to sort of see everything neat like this and I, I prefer it this way. Uh, and I like switching it this way, and plus I, I know I can sort of see the comments and things like that when they work. So what we'll do now is all you have to do to press record, or to start this, is just press this button here. Um, and what I'll do is I'm just, I'll record it too at the same time. So we'll go live. Now I've just gotta make sure I send my wife the link. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna press record before we start. Uh, and I'm gonna say start recording. And now I'm just gonna click on this. Now it takes about, it's saying start early because I'm before the time. All right, so what this does, it also takes about 10 seconds I've noticed before it starts recording. So you sort of have to count down about 10 seconds before it actually starts uh, to come through. Um, and we'll sort of test that in a minute when we sort of see it up. So I'm just waiting now for this to come on live. Okay, so when we're here, like if I switch now, it'll switch between uh, both um, areas like I was showing before, and I can do that live. Um, now Kerry, I'm just talking to Kerry on the phone, she's in the other house. Uh, can you now type something, can you see the chat? So what I'm hoping is that Kerry can talk and I'll see it up through here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but it's not showing, oh, there you go. All right, so you can see here that Kerry has uh, a uh, replied or she's put a comment in there as well. Now I don't think I can reply to it though through here so but at least I could read their comment and answer it which is fantastic. Uh, so Kerry just write something else uh, just so I can sort of see you there and then uh, you can finish. So that's great. So at least I could be sort of traveling anywhere and then I can see the comments come up uh, and obviously I suppose when they come down far enough you'd just be able to scroll through uh, and go down as well. Uh, see there you go, just Kerry's just said just testing. So that's fantastic.
All right, so that's how that works. So I think that's brilliant. And again, like I said, if I wanted to, I can add picture and picture. I could have done this before if I wanted to, just kept that and then go next and kept that. Uh, have that ready to go before I start. And then I've got the next picture there that I can just bring up. Um, so that, you know, how good is this? It's just amazing. So I really do like the way that this system uh, actually works. I think it's it's fantastic and you saw how easily I got up. Now it does tell you on the top too that the I've got 822 kilobytes per second up and I'm on 29 frames per second and I haven't dropped any frames at all. And it tells you here that it's live uh, 239 and your recording is 247. Um, and it also over this side too, it gives you your Wi-Fi signal uh, and also your battery and it shows you you've got a card in as well and you get a percentage too. Uh, so it's it's terrific. Now to finish the broadcast, all you do is you just press stop and then it will say close. And then all I have to do is uh, stop the recording as well, which it did. Uh, and that's it. And then to delete the actual uh, recording, all you do is you just click onto here and then you can say delete test. And that's it. So what we'll do now is we'll go outside and we'll do a test with it from outside. Uh, and I'm probably, I haven't got a, a, a card to stick in a SIM card, but I'll use a wireless directly streaming from my um, phone. So we'll try that and just see how it goes uh, with Wi-Fi that way. Okay, so you can see the setup that I'm using here. Uh, it's it's a really nice little setup. I can just stick on a table or something. Now the audio is going to be slightly muffled because it was in my pocket, the actual receiver. It's a Hollyland little receiver uh, due to the wind. Uh, but this gives you an idea about how my setup was working and I could see the monitor clearly at the front and it was really easy to use in that position. This is a live test just to see how the R-Box works out in location. Now I've just got it basically using wireless off my iPhone, so I'm doing it that way. Uh, to see how it goes. I haven't got a card that I can stick in because you can do it that way if you do have a SIM card uh, and put that straight in and, and go that way. I hope it's not too windy or noisy because it is very, very windy at the moment. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, this actually sounds. I've got the actual microphone sitting inside my pocket down here. Uh, so hopefully that protects it a little bit from the wind. Uh, now, if you can see, I'm going to bring up my um, logo. So that's where you can see my logo that I did discuss earlier. And also I can just bring on the lower third as well. Uh, so I'm just testing this to see how it all works. This is only a very, very small, quick test just to see if everything works fine here. Uh, I want to see how the uh, stream quality is going from uh, using this uh, directly to it. Uh, it's on 5G, so it should be fairly good. Uh, and I'll be surprised if, you know, if we're losing frames. I'm just checking to see um, if it's, there's no drop frames at all, it's saying. So it looks like that's all fine. Um, but this is going to be fantastic because could you just imagine being out somewhere on location and you can just stream live like this. You could be doing weddings like this, um, even if you were, say, in the church or whatever. Uh, there's so many things that you could use this for as long as you have a signal or a Wi-Fi signal to get straight in uh, onto YouTube or onto Facebook. I'm only going to, Facebook, uh, to YouTube on this stream. So this is just a test to see how this all works. It's the first one that I've done, so I can't wait to have a look at this on the computer, and I'll show you actually on YouTube how this looks uh, on there as well. So apart from that, everyone, uh, we'll get back to the studio. Okay, so how do we sum this uh, little device up? Uh, build quality is just amazing. I mean, it really is made very, very well. Uh, very sturdy. Uh, the monitor itself is really nice to look at. Uh, and I was just using it outdoors then. It was a little bit hard if you get the light flashing on it. It'd be great actually if you could get some sort of a, a um, cover that you could sort of see there like a sun shield. That would be fantastic or a sunshade. Um, uh, perhaps that's something small rig or someone like that could do. Um, the quality is fantastic. I mean, if you saw the quality in that video, it really is good for what I was getting. Uh, and being able to stream live like that, like if you, like I said, if you're in a church or a wedding ceremony and things like that, that's another option now that I can offer uh, my clients, which is great. You can just put a SIM card directly in, but I did it directly from the phone, uh, and it worked brilliantly. Uh, the only issue, like I said, was the audio, but that was due to the fact that I stuck that uh, little piece in my pocket here due to it was so windy. If it was a nice uh, calm day I could have had the microphone on the outside and the audio would have been much better. Um, but I've tested the audio actually here and it sounds fine if you uh, are recording normally without the wind and stuff uh, blowing through the, your uh, pockets and stuff. Uh, so that was great. I only really had one issue um, and like I said to you I'm always honest with you guys uh, and that was the fact that it wouldn't work very well with PAL. I, I was getting an audio dropout but they actually wanted to down 
downgrade the firmware to the previous one where that never happened. But I loved all the new features that they put in. Uh, and I'd actually found that um, if I put it to NTSC, and it's so simple on my cameras to turn them into NTSC, all the issues disappeared with the audio. So uh, that was the workaround that I'll use. Now they're fantastic because they do put out continuous fixes and upgrades to the firmware. So they actually said to me that they'll pass that feedback on to their uh, programmers and their support and they'll fix it in a coming update. So uh, I'll be waiting for that. In, at the moment though, I can get around it by just leaving it in NTSC and that's fine. Uh, apart from that, there's no issues at all. Uh, the software worked great. Uh, I didn't really have any bugs, no crashes or anything like that. Uh, I wanted to thank um, Yellow Box for sending me this, but like I said, they didn't say, tell me to do anything, to say anything. Uh, it was totally how I found the product and I've really been happy with it. And I'm looking forward to using this uh, in the future as part of my workflow. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, and apart from that, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.